Hello and welcome to today's lesson on fluorescence, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, our primary aim is to look at describing how fluorescent tubes work. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be ex able to explain what happens inside an atom when it becomes excited. We should be able to understand the process of de-excitation and finally detail how a fluorescent tube works, which is part of the AQA level physics specification in the particles and radiation section in the topics of collisions of electrons with atoms and energy levels and photon emission. So we can represent the excitation energies of an atom with the following diagram. Now excitation energies are the energies of photons which will cause the electrons to move up an energy level. So the ground state as we know is the lowest possible energy state of an atom. It's the inner shell of the electrons in the atom. Now the top level is the amount of energy needed to ionize the atom and it's written with a dashed line as it represents the boundary of the atom. Now the number on the side here represents the amount of energy found in each energy shell. So for example in this case the ground state has an energy of 2 eV. Now we can also represent the atom with an energy level diagram showing the ionization energies not the excitation energies. Now the, represent with the ionization energies is probably the most common way of writing down the electron structure of an atom. Now like we said before, the top line is the amount of energy needed to ionize the atom. So it's written with a dashed line as it represents the boundary of the atom. And the ground state is the lowest possible state of an atom, the inner shell of the electrons, and this state has the electrons most strongly bound to those nuclei. So as a result, what we can say is the number on the side now represents the amount of energy needed to ionize an electron found in this particular shell. So for example, if you wish to ionize an electron found in energy level 2, you would need to give that the electrons in this shell 8 eV or more. Now it's important to note that energy levels or ionization energies are always written as negative values. This is because they're relative to the ionization level. So we set our ionization level at 0 eV and so therefore for example, minus 2 eV, like in energy level 4, means that 2 eV is needed for the electron in this level to be ionized. Now we define zero energy as the energy required for the electron to leave the electrostatic attraction of the nucleus. We do this because at that point there's no electrical potential energy between that free electron and the nucleus. Because technically, and this is very important when you look at electrical and gravitational fields, energy and potential are always defined as as zero at infinity. Now from the nucleus point of view the electron is at infinity when it leaves its attraction since it could be anywhere in the universe. So we state that an object okay, when it's out, is at infinity when it's outside the non-contact field because it has no influence on the object. Now like mentioned before another name for the ionization energies is the energy level of an atom. Now you should always give energy levels in terms of negatives, as the electrons are bound to the nucleus via potential wells, so require energy to release them. So we can say that the electrons in these shells, in these energy levels, are in debt to the nucleus. So work would need to be done to an atom to liberate these electrons. So therefore... A negative energy means that the atom needs to take energy in or work is done from the surroundings to liberate any electrons. So for example, to liberate any electron in energy level uh, 3, you need to give the electrons at least 5 eV. Now this is an important idea because we can now look at this concept when we're looking at excitation and then something called de-excitation. Now the electron configuration in an excited atom is unstable because what what happens is an electron moves to an upper or outer shell, leaving a vacancy in the shell that it moves from. So for example, if an electron in ground state is excited, it can leave this shell and go to a higher level. So the electron could move to energy level 4. So if it moves up, 
we say the electron is excited. Now this leaves a space or vacancy at the shell it departs. Now atoms don't like to have vacancies in their inner shells because it disrupts their stability. And in addition to that, the electrons in the higher levels are also less stable than the inner shell electrons since they need more energy to exist in the higher energy shells. So sooner or later, the vacancy is filled by an electron from an outer shell dropping down as the electrons prefer to exist at lower energy levels as they're more stable. Now the electron which does this is dependent on probability, with the higher level electrons more probable to do so because they're more unstable. Now this is why you learn in chemistry that electrons fill up certain shells first, because it's more energetically favourable to do so. It's the concept of entropy. Now when this happens, when an electron moves down the energy levels or de-excites, the excess energy moving from one level to another level is then emitted as a photon of energy. So what happens in de-excitation or relaxation, an outer shell electron drops down to fill a vacancy in an inner shell. So in doing this it sheds the excess energy needed to exist at the higher level and this energy is then released as a photon of energy. So a photon photon of energy is released when an electron moves down the energy shells. Now it's important to note that atoms can only release photons of certain energy and this corresponds to the energy level differences between the energy levels in this atom. So the, the energy of the photon is equal to the energy level difference of the energy levels in the atom. So in this example it's going from 2 eV to 15 eV so this means that therefore 13 eV, the difference between the two of them, is released as a photon. So this is the energy of the photon released from the atom. Now this process explains why certain substances fluoresce or glow with visible light when they absorb radiation and it's why different elements glow with different colours in the chemistry flame test. Now interestingly red visible light is longer wavelength visible light. So this is a photon produced from a small energy level difference that the electrons are moving between in the atom whilst blue visible light is short shorter wavelength light. So this is a photon produced from a large energy level difference that the electrons are moving between in the atom. Now if the energy level difference between the two energy levels the electron moves between is so small, the photon is produced in the infrared spectrum. Whilst if the energy level difference between the two energy levels the electrons move between is very large, the photon is produced in the ultraviolet spectrum. And this actually explains why ultraviolet photons are so rare, because you need a large energy level difference between the two energy levels in the atom to produce them. So let's summarise what we've learned here. Excitation is the process of electrons moving to, into a higher energy level from a lower one. Now excitation is an instantaneous process and excitation requires energy to be placed into the atom. Now excitation can occur either due to the absorption of a photon by an atom or by the transfer of kinetic energy from a colliding particle such as a free electron. Now excitation requires the exact energy level difference between the levels to take place place in an atom. Now a photon will require the exact energy level difference to cause excitation, whilst a colliding particle will only lose the exact energy level difference from its kinetic energy store. Now de-excitation is the process of electrons moving into lower uh, energy levels from higher ones, and de-excitation is also an instantaneous process. So de-excitation releases energy from the atom in the form of a photon, and the energy of the photon photon released during de-excitation is equal to the energy level difference between the two levels the electron moves between. Now the larger the difference in values between the energy levels, the greater the energy the photon has. And the smaller the difference in values between the energy levels, the lower the energy the photon has. Now this process explains why certain substances fluoresce or glow when they absorb radiation. Now atoms in the substance absorb energy and become excited, then the atoms de-excite and they emit visible photons. Photons. So this means that when the original source of excitation energy is removed, the substance stops glowing or fluorescing. Now an example of this is the idea of a fluorescent tube. So the first step is you put an electrical current through this fluorescent tube. This will cause excitation in the atoms inside the fluorescent tube. The atoms will then relax and then they'll emit photons, which we can then observe okay, as a human being. Now the incandescent light bulb is an inefficient device for producing light. 
light, it's only about 1 or 2% efficient, whilst a filament lamp has an efficiency of about 10%. But fluorescent lamps use electricity to cause excitation of mercury vapour. When the mercury atoms relax, they emit ultraviolet photons. Now, ultraviolet light, as the name suggests, is not visible, but can be converted into visible light using phosphor. This coats the side of an inside of a bulb and fluoresces when bombarded with the ultraviolet photons from the mercury vapour. So a fluorescent tube will work like mentioned before with an electrical current passing through it, leading to excitation, leading to de-excitation or relaxation and then leading to photon emission. So let's look at the steps behind a fluorescent tube. So a fluorescent tube works as the free electrons flowing through the current due to this hit into the mercury atoms and excite them. So this is caused by applying a high voltage across the fluorescent tube. So you get an electrical current, an electric, an electron atom collision and therefore excitation. Now some of the atoms will also be ionized by the collisions with the free electrons and each other. The mercury atoms will de-excite and relax and emit photons of energy as ultraviolet radiation. So you get relaxation and then a UV photon emission. Now this happens as the energy level differences in mercury equate to the production of a UV photon. Now these photons of ultraviolet radiation then hit the phosphorus atoms on the surface of the tube and they excite them. Now again this happens as the certain energy level differences in phosphorus allows the UV photon to be absorbed and cause excitation. Now these phosphorus atoms after they've been excited de-excite or relax and release energy as visible photons. Now this happens as certain energy level differences in phosphorus equate to visible photons. Now it's also important to note that there are certain energy level differences in phosphorus which equate to UV photons being emitted which is why a fluorescent tube is not 100% efficient. So a fluorescent tube works as ionization and excitation of the mercury gas atoms occur as they collide with each other and the electrons flowing through the tube. Stage 2. The mercury atoms emit photons in both the UV and visible spectrum of energy when they de-excite. The UV photons are then absorbed by atoms of the phosphorus coating on the surface of the atom. This will excite these atoms, then the phosphorus coating de-excites and emits visible photons along with some UV photons and that's how a fluorescent tube works. So if we are successful and learn in this lesson, we should understand what ionisation and excitation are and understand the process of, uh, of ionisation and excitation in the fluorescent tube. We should understand what the electron volt is and be able to convert between between EV and joules and vice versa. And we should also be able to look at these ideas of, of transitions between energy levels in atoms. So what we should be able to do from today's lesson is explain what happens inside an atom when it becomes excited, understand the process of de-excitation, and detail how a fluorescent tube works. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, looking at fluorescence, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.